okay guys welcome to the new lecture the video lecture about the analysis and design of staircase uh, this lecture uh, basically consists of two parts in the first part we will try to understand different terminologies and in the second part we will try to solve some numerical examples what are stairs stairs must be provided in almost all buildings we all know that right and so in order to uh, provide the stairs uh, we should take care that it uh, should be within the uh, desired limits uh, keeping in mind the the requirements of different buildings for example the requirements of residential buildings are different to that of commercial building or the hospitals etc okay so stair must be provided in almost all the buildings either they are high rise building or uh, low rise building even if adequate uh, number of elevators are provided stairs consist of rises runs and landings the total steps and landings are called a staircase okay the rise is defined as the vertical distance between two steps and the run is the depth of the step the landing is the horizontal part of the staircase without rises uh, as seen in figure 1 here you can see that uh, uh, this is for example uh, come to the uh, 1b you can see that this is the landing portion this is staircase right uh, which consists of rise the vertical distance and run the horizontal distance okay and this is again a landing so uh, the normal dimensions of the rises and runs in a building are related by some empirical rules uh, for example the rise plus run should be equal to 17 inches 2 into rise plus run should be equal to 25 inches and rise into run should be equal to 75 square inches okay if these are some em empirical rules the rise depends on the use of the building for example in public building the rise is about 6 inches right whereas in residential buildings it varies between 6 and 7.5 the run is about 1 feet in public building however it varies between 9 and 12 in the residential buildings so different uh, uh, buildings uh, have uh, requirements of different types of uh, uh, staircases right in general a rise should not exceed 8 inch or be less than 4 inch and the number of rises is obtained by dividing the structural floor to floor dimensions by the assumed rise so uh, you can see that uh, this is the loading arrangement that we assume for example if uh, the staircase is supported here and here only so uh, we have assumed the supports at the ends of the landings right so a complete staircase uh, analysis will comprise of uh, these two landings and this inclined part okay so the span length will vary uh, will be from this point to this point this will be the total span length and we have to apply the udl on this entire length and we have to analyze for this type of load okay uh, this is the plan uh, of uh, our staircase the section cc will be discussed in figure 3 so don't worry about that okay now types of stair there are different types of stair the most simple one is a single flight stairs now you can pause this video and read it out by yourself i will just uh, uh, make you understand uh, for, uh, by use of uh, figures for example this is a single uh, flight stairs this is also a single flight stair okay you can see that this is more or less similar to the previous one right the beams are provided at the end of these landings and there is a single flight involved right so this is a single flight but the uh, supporting system for this single flight can vary for example in a very simple case if the beams are provided only at the end of these flights so you have uh, seen that the supports are only provided at the ends right and the uh, span length is from a to d however there are some cases that where uh, you can provide a beam uh, at point B and C as well. In this case, the span length will be from B to C, right? And the requirements will reduce, right? The bending moment requirement, the shear force requirement, everything. Also, there are uh, possibilities that whether at B or whether at C, you provide a support to reduce the span length. So in this case, the span length will be from B to D, and in this case, it will be from A to C, right? so these are the different uh, arrangements of the supporting system uh, figure c three is basically that section cc of figure one if you remember these are the steps supporting by the stringer beams right the stringer beams are provided and they are supporting these steps 
right? The second type of uh, uh, steer is double flight steer. As you can see, uh, it is a double uh, flight steer and uh, uh, you can see here as well that uh, a closed well and open well. This is called a closed well staircase and this is called open well staircase, right? This is a, a first flight and this is second flight and these are the landings in both the cases, right? So, these are also a uh, type of uh, uh, double flight staircase and uh, this is the cross section. If you cut it here, for example, if you cut at CC uh, or no, not CC but at BB, it will look like this. This is the section BB, right? you are going this way this is the landing and then you are going up right and this is the section cc basically showing the uh, loading arrangement on this slab system why it is like this because uh, for example this is section bb right because if you look at this uh, flight the half of the load is transferring to this landing and half of its load is transferring to this landing okay so here the landing is getting half of the load from the uh, flight and this landing is also getting half of the load from the flight we are uh, just assuming this portion right the uh, the other portion will be analyzed and designed separately you will see it and the staircase the land uh, the flight is experiencing or getting the complete load right so that's how we analyze this type of uh, slab system you will see in while, while we uh, solve the example also uh, there is a three or more flights of stairs for example here you can see that it is a three uh, stair flight uh, uh, the first st uh, flight the second and the third okay and this is the landing this is the quarter landing this is the quarter landing and this is full landing However, there can be a four stair flight, for example, this one, uh, the first flight, the second flight, the third flight and the fourth flight, right? And these all are the quarter landings. So these are three or more uh, stair flights. Another flight, uh, another type of stairs are the cantilever stairs, uh, which are uh, just like the cantilever beam. For example, as you can see here. Uh, the stair is supported at uh, some point whether it is a beam or it is a column or it is a wall but the, uh, the, the whole load or the whole stability of this stair is wholly solely depends upon the stability of this support system just like cantilever beam okay so uh, uh, it, it, it's up to you that what kind of support you are providing to it but its design is like a cantilever beam and therefore you can see the steel distribution it is at the top right because of the negative stresses uh, at the top and uh, other type is precast flights of steer you can uh, put the precast stairs you can uh, just uh, make uh, the supporting beam for example here you can see that first you make or construct the uh, supporting beam and then you install the precast uh, stairs this is the supporting beam you just make it uh, and then you just install the precast uh, uh, slabs or what you ever called it the stairs on it okay another arrangement is like uh, you just uh, uh, manufacture this and just install it for example if you can see this detail so here you have to install this pre-cost uh, stair slab uh, uh, into this uh, landing which is installed previously and this point the joint need uh, some uh, special details okay so joint of a pre-cost concrete flight of stairs this is a pre-cost concrete flight of stairs right the next one type is freestanding stairs let me make it to the so that i can see it because every time i just go up the the menu is coming down okay uh, freestanding stairs in this type of stairs the landing projects into the air without any support as at its end okay 
uh, let me show you for example this is the freestanding stair the slab is supported at a then this can this landing is acting as a cantilever and uh, not does not su supporting this uh, staircase and then again the staircase is supported at this point for example in the figure you can see that this portion is not supported this is a cantilever uh, part of this uh, landing and its load is also uh, supported by this uh, staircase and eventually this point and this point right so here uh, the load is resisted by point a and d and uh, there are three cases in this type of uh, staircase if uh, for example the uh, this portion is loaded for example you can see that the loaded steps right the loaded steps if upper part is loaded then what will happen the pending will be uh, uh, faced by this uh, uh, part and the twisting will be in for example in the uh, clockwise uh, direction and there will be compression or buckling in this lower part if upper part is loaded however if the lower part is loaded as you can see that and upper part is unloaded uh, so there will be pending in the lower part uh, whereas before uh, there was compression and buckling in this part and there will be tension in the this upper part and the twisting uh, the direction of rotation will change from clockwise to anti-clockwise and the third one is that if both the uh, points or uh, steps are loaded simultaneously and people are using them okay so there are three possibilities when live load acts on the upper flight and half the landing only second one is when the live load acts on the lower flight and half the landing only and third one is when the live load acts on both upper and lower flights okay so these are these are the details where you can see the reinforcement detail as well these uh, these are the reinforcement details uh, and uh, you can see that uh, the the reinforcement are just like the uh, simply supported in the staircases and uh, there are negative and positive reinforcement both in this uh, cantilever slab portion right a study was made to determine the effect of the following parameters on the freestanding staircase number one was width of the stairs so an increase in the width from 4 to 10 feet will increase the forces and movements sharply for example the torsional movement along this flight increases by about 1400 percent therefore it is desirable to restrict the flight width between 4 and 6 feet other movements increases by amount about 450 percent the second one is the span length span length also uh, affects greatly if l is increased from 8 to 16 for example if span length is doubled the shearing forces at the top edge of the stairs increase by about 230 percent so it is not just doubled it is 230 percent of the original movements increase by about 100 to 150 percent the third parameter is total flight height edge if edge is increased from 10 to 16 the shearing force at the top edge increases by about 150 percent movements increase by about 50 to 100 percent the fifth one uh, the fourth one is the flight slab thickness this parameter has the least effect on forces and movement for example if t is increased from 6 to 10 the movements increase by about 25 percent only and shear force about 20 percent only so for practical design the parameters may be chosen as flight width between 4 and 6 feet horizontal span between 9 and 12 feet total flight height between 10 and 15 feet and slab thickness between 6 and 10 inches so these are the practical recommendations uh, for this type of uh, uh, staircases the seven type is run riser stairs you can see the bottom see the bottom is not like the previous one it is not a simple slab right so it it is uh, a run riser slab it is a stepped underside right it is underside uh, step just like uh, the overside that consists of number of runs and risers rigidly connected without the provision of the normal waste slab so there is no waste slab right this type of stairs has an elegant appearance and is sometimes favored by architects of course 
the structural analysis of run riser stress can be simplified by assuming that the effect of axial force is negligible and that the load on each run is considered at the end of the run so this is the load and resisted by the ends for example the end a and c so p by 2 and p by 2 and this is its bending moment diagram right for the analysis of a simply supported flight of stairs consider a simple flight of two runs a b c subject to a concentrated load p at b dash just like here b dash right because joints b and b dash are rigid the moment at b is equal to the moment at b dash so moment at b or moment at b dash will be equal to uh, p by 2 multiplied by this l this is very simple right so p into s by 2 where s is the width of the run the moment in rise p b dash is constant and is equal to p s by 2 when the rise is absent the stairs a b c act as a simply supported beam when the this rise is absent so it will act like a simply supported beam right and the maximum bending moment is again equal to the same half into p into s this is the bending moment formula for the simply supported beam and it is similar to that of the run riser uh, assumed slab so for a flight of stairs that consists of a number of runs and risers the same approach can be used the bending moment diagram is shown in figure 15a you can see this right this is the bending moment diagram for this uh, run riser approach the moment in bb dash is constant and is equal to the moment at point at joint b or 2 into ps similarly mc is equal to mc dash md is equal to md dash me is equal to me dash right so you can see that here it was 2 ps again here it is 2 ps at the middle it is 3 ps right because of this load this uh, point uh, this p is uh, resisted by c as well as a all right so this p is uh, resisted by b and d and this p is resisted by c and e so this c is resisting the load coming from this p and this p therefore it is 3 into p s and also for this one okay if a landing is present just like previous one at one or both ends the load on the landing practically may be represented by concentrated load similar to the runs the structural analysis may also be performed for example figure 15 b so in this case you can assume it as a simply supported load and the bending moment diagram will be like this one subjected to uniformly distributed load this was subjected to the point loads and this is subjected to the uniformly distributed loads if the stair flight is fixed or continuous at one or both ends so this will be the formula 1 by 4 pl minus ma is equal to half p into s minus 1 fourth of ps that will be equal to 1 by 4 of the ps so the bending moment of flight of stairs with one riser is shown in figure 16a as you can see that and it will be equal to ps by 4 and for a symmetrical stair flight for example this one it is equal to 1 by 12 of ps into n square minus 1 and when you put the value of n to be 2 so it is equal to the same one ps by 4 as you can see here it was ps by 4 all right uh, for further details you can just read out the text uh, the eighth type is the helical stair i think this is the last one a helical stair is as you can see that spiral in uh, shape and uh, uh, yeah, there are some details that you need to know about it the total arc subtended by the helix with an angle that normally ranges from 240 to 360 for 16 equal runs at 20 degree pitch the total arc equals 320 degree if the arc is increased from 240 to 360 the vertical moment may increase by about 1200 percent so it all depends upon uh, your angle the arc and the total angle that you want there are some factors in this uh, helical uh, stairs as well for example the width of stairs should be from four to eight feet the exterior radii and the interior radii its variation the thickness of the stair slab 
the total height of the helical sphere. So based on this study, the possible practical dimensions may be chosen as the total substandard arc between 120 degree and 320 degree, stair width between 4 and 6 feet, stair slab thickness between 10 and uh, 6 and 10 inch and stair height between 10 and 15 feet. These are the practical dimensions that will uh, work perfectly for you. The above information can be used as a guide to achieve a proper and economical design of helical staircase. An alternative method of providing a helical stair is to use a central helical girder located at the mid width of the stair and have the steps projected equally on both sides of the girder just like a two-way cantilever. Each step is analyzed as a cantilever and the reinforcement bar extend all along the top of the rung. Precast concrete steps may be used and they can be fixed to specially prepared horizontal faces at the top surfaces of the girder. So these are the eight types of uh, staircases that are provided and uh, I tried to explain you very briefly. You can pause the video at any point and you can read out the text by yourself. In the next video we will solve uh, examples and we will try to understand how the design of uh, staircase is performed. Uh, thank you very much and uh, see you in the next video.